Hello everyone, welcome to Exam Assure. Today we will be discussing the exam preparation strategy for the exam of Deputy Architect which will be conducted by the UPSC. As far as the topics that are concerned for the exam, you can see a list over here that is given. Now this has been the syllabus for the exam of Assistant Architect as well and likewise for the exam of deputy architect also, the topic or the contents will be more or less similar. So if you see subjects like architectural design, basic design, computer application, climatology, acoustics, contemporary architecture, estimation costing, some parts of planning as well as your interior design, earthquake resistant design, urban design, construction management, building automation systems. All of these are important from the exam perspective. Now, if you look at the previous paper analysis, now since these exams are being conducted by the UPSC, we will analyze the previous paper for that of the assistant architect exam as well. Though the exam will be held for deputy architect, but the board which is setting the question paper is going to be the same that is the UPSC. So if you see the analysis for the 2015 paper of assistant architect, here if you see majority of the questions are from your architectural design, roughly 20 questions. Then you have another part, major part from history of architecture, 16 questions, 14 questions from earthquake design. Then you have building construction, building bylaws and standards, building services and climatology. So all of these are quite important topics. But here, if you see major weightage is given to architectural design and history of architecture. Moving on to the next paper of 2016. Now in 2016, the exam that was held was for the post of deputy architect as well as assistant architect. And the question paper was the same for both these posts. However, the calculation and marking was done accordingly as per the post, but the questions were the exact same. So again, even here, if you see maximum number of questions you have again from climatology, architectural design, 11 questions. Here, this time you have more questions from building construction, building services, same for history of architecture. And then the rest of the subjects like environment, estimation, uh, planning, tenders and contracts, urban design, etc. Now, analyzing the question paper for 2019 of Deputy Architect. Now, this exam was held for the military engineering services. This is different from your CPWD. However, the exam was conducted by UPSC itself. Hence, we will also look at this question paper. So here also we see a very similar pattern. If you see again, 11 questions from architectural design, nine questions from services, nine questions from history of architecture. Then you have climatology, building bylaws are given a little more weightage here in this paper and likewise for the other subjects. So if you cumulatively analyze or compare between these three papers that we have, we see your architectural design, building services, building construction, climatology, earthquake design, history of architecture have been given a lot of weightage. And then you have other subjects. So if you analyze otherwise, roughly, we have 10 to 20, between 10 to 20 questions from these points, these topics, that is architectural design, building construction, climatology, history of architecture. Then in the next set of questions, let's say roughly four to between four to 10 questions, we have from other areas like architects and their works or building bylaws, or environment and ecology and likewise. And then for the allied subjects, let's say you have transportation or 
universal design all of these questions let's say even housing so roughly one to four questions come from these topics so if you take an overall analysis we can say that a priority subject or the top priority subjects can be architectural design building construction building services climatology or quick design and history of architecture so this is on the basis of the analysis where you have maximum number of questions coming from these topics so in case of preparation strategy i'm sure we can prioritize these into first priority that is uh, the highest priority then second and third priority so likewise we will have to finish or let's say when you're preparing maybe you're studying on your own or however it is we will have to prioritize architectural design and graphics your building construction services climatology earthquake design and history of architecture as our topmost priorities then in the second set or after the first priority we can have our subjects or topics related to architects and their work building bylaws uh, computer application and software environment ecology estimation and valuation your landscape planning professional practice project management tenders and contract and urban design as your second priority subject and then in the third priority we can have questions or topics on which questions range between 1 to 4 number of questions in the exam so likewise you have your architectural graphics books and authors building automation conservation government schemes housing transportation and some questions related to universal design also can be expected so now if i say that we are prioritizing these it does not mean that you only study the subjects that are in the topmost priority or the highest priority what it means is we focus more on them and not ignore the other subjects okay so in terms of the strategy if i may say so what we can do is finish the first priority subjects so let us assume that you start studying from uh, august the month of august okay now since i'm sure all of you have done your five years of bachelor's in architecture and know from amongst these history is a very very vast subject right so maybe we can give around 3 weeks to complete entire history right from your indian um, architectural history to western history where it will include all your greek roman etc right from ancient period to modern period all of that will be included so we can maybe give 3 weeks for that once history is done we can take a little lighter subject maybe architectural design for a week once this is done we can give another one and a half week for your building construction or other let's say two weeks because we know that building construction is a vast subject again and if you look at the questions in the previous years they are a bit in detail so you have to study all the materials the brick bonds for example etc a little bit in detail from this exam perspective hence a little more time because again the portion for building construction is quite vast then we can move on to building services for another week and by one week i mean just six days monday to saturday here then once we are done with building services uh, we can finish off climatology in another four days two days for earthquake design yes and with that we are done with our first priority subjects or the highest priority subjects then moving on to our second priority subjects we can take up environment and ecology for a week once that is done 
we can move on to project management for two three days we can finish three uh, project management in three days after that along with project management we can also cover estimation and valuation then three days for planning history because if you see three days are more than enough in this case as the questions for these topics are not so much in detail and also if you see as per the previous analysis the number of questions are little less as compared to the first priority topics right once you're done with history planning history you can move to urban design then professional practice and along with professional practice we can have we can complete tenders and contracts so three days for professional practice and three days for tenders and contracts another two days for landscape architecture two days for building bylaws now in building bylaws again the primary focus is that on the national building code so you can refer to that as well now we've almost covered most of these topics another two days we can finish off architects and their works and softwares so now again in this what you need to do for architects and their works or even software these are more or less factual questions so utilize these two days only to probably prepare the list of architects and their works or softwares and their commands if needed as since most of us use the software on a daily basis we are more or less accustomed with it then once that is done by october end we can start with our housing part so we have roughly 3 days for housing once housing is done we can take up 2 days for conservation 2 days for transportation now we are moving to our third priority list okay so here if you see uh, questions related to transportation or conservation these are very very basic questions that have been asked in all the three exams that were previously held then take another 2 days for graphics 2 days for building automation in fact 2 days is also a lot even one day would be enough for building automation yes importantly is your government scheme so you can go to the different government websites and refer whatever schemes are there as well so that would be helpful one day you can spend for noting down books and their authors so this basically you just have to prepare a list and go through the list again and again till the date of the exam because it's all factual questions that are asked on this and one day for universal design where you know the principles of universal design and try and understand that as well so with this roughly in a very slow paced and a detailed manner you can finish off your revision or let's say going through the entire syllabus at least once since the dates are not yet out we can still take the liberty to have a slow paced preparation for the exam now what if you see we are studying from monday to saturday so on sunday what you can do is at least give half an hour or one hour every sunday to revise what you have done in the previous week okay so let's say on the 6th of november sunday i revise what i have done from first or uh, let's say what i'll revise is my housing conservation and transportation what is done so that way by the time you finish off the syllabus you don't forget what you studied first let's say we studied history of architecture so by the time you reach here we don't want you to forget what you studied so keep revising also because as much as studying is important so is the revision so i hope this strategy is helpful for all of you also we are starting with the live online course from 3rd of august and other than that one important thing is for those of who you want to download the previous year questions for your analysis self analysis you can download it from the link given in the description box below
So thank you and I hope this was helpful for all of you.